Hi everybody, this is Julian from Hugging Face. In this video, I would like to show you the newly launched SageMaker training compiler. This is a new capability for SageMaker that was launched yesterday at AWS reInvent. And in a nutshell, it makes it pretty easy to speed up training jobs for large deep learning models. It's of particular interest to me and to the community because um, the initial models that are supported by uh, the training compiler are hugging face models. So of course, that's what we're going to use. Okay, let's get started. Before we jump into the code, just a few words about the training compiler. Stating the obvious, this is all about training, not inference. So the model optimization steps that the compiler applies will shorten the training time and they won't do anything for the prediction time. If you need to optimize the prediction time, uh, then you could look at uh, SageMaker Neo, uh, you could look at uh, Inferentia, uh, or you could use uh, the uh, Optimum library uh, from Hugging Face, which is an open source library. So training only. Now, so which models are supported right now? Uh, as we can see in, in the What's New post, we see that uh, the training compiler currently supports uh, Hugging Face models, and that means the most popular uh, model architectures like BERT, Distilbert, uh, GPT-2, Roberta, etc., etc. Okay, and that's what we're going to look at now. We're going to run a training job on a single GPU, uh, a vanilla version first, and then an optimized version, and we'll compare the training times, and then uh, we'll quickly do the same for a multi-GPU job. Okay, here we go. Here I'm using sample notebooks that are located in the Amazon SageMaker examples repository on GitHub. Uh, so you can go and, uh, and run them as well. Okay, the first one is that PyTorch single GPU single node example. So what is this one about? So in this example, we fine tune a BERT model that we pulled from the Hugging Face Hub on the SST dataset. So I won't cover the Hugging Face specific bits. Uh, you can find this in, in other videos and I'll just walk you through the high level workflow and we'll focus on the, on the uh, compiler configuration and the results. Okay, so let's get started. So first of all, of course, we need to install um, some packages um, and there's some stuff here to install what I'm guessing are uh, like early versions of, uh, of the libraries. Um, by the time you watch this, you know, all the Boto and SageMaker versions uh, will probably be up to date. So I'm guessing you could do away with that. But for now, let's just run those cells. Okay. Um, of course, we import SageMaker and the Transformers library. Uh, we grab a SageMaker bucket and SageMaker role. Next, we download the, the SST dataset using the datasets library. Okay. So that's... Uh, Simple enough, uh, and uh, it's actually located in the uh, in S3 already, right? So we grab that, uh, we do a little bit of processing, um, splitting and dropping and uh, encoding some uh, some columns, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Again, you can go through those steps quickly, and there's nothing complicated here. Okay, so next, my dataset is ready. I can download the tokenizer for that uh, for that BERT model, okay? Uh, and I'm gonna tokenize my data set with it, right? And I'm gonna train the model on the tokenized data. Okay, so once those steps are complete, uh, I can upload the process data set to S3, right? Um, the training set and the, the test set. And, and notice here we are Again, using the datasets library uh, where we can directly um, upload data to S3, right? So uh, integration uh, is, uh, makes things pretty simple here. And now we can move on to our training code, okay? So let's take a quick look at the training script. And as you will see, it's, uh, it's a vanilla hugging face script. Uh, we use script mode to receive command line arguments. Uh, we define our training arguments. We define our trainer object. 
we grab the model and the tokenizer from the hub, right? According to the one that was passed as a command line argument here. Okay, and then we train and evaluate and save the model. So as you can see, this is really a vanilla script. Uh, we don't need to modify anything here. So there's nothing in there about the training compiler, which is fine, right? That means we can take our existing code and uh, use it as is. So where do we actually configure the compiler? So let's go back to the notebook. Okay, yeah, so we see the training script again here. And first, uh, we're going to launch uh, a vanilla job, right, uh, with no compilation. So that will give us the baseline, right? Um, just a note here, uh, maybe I wasn't lucky, but using the default setting in this notebook, which has a batch size of 14, I did get uh, an out-of-memory CUDA error. Uh, so I changed it to 8, and now it's fine. I created a PR for this. Again, you can try 14, but for me, it, it didn't work. And next, I configure the hugging face estimator. And we've seen this quite a few times, passing the script, training on a single instance with a single GPU, uh, and yeah, setting the transformer version, which at the time of recording is the only one supported, hyperparameters, and then launching training, right? And we set weight to false so that uh, we can uh, keep running stuff in the notebook. Okay, so that fires up that uh, um, a vanilla job, and that will give us the baseline. Okay, so now let's do exactly the same, uh, but with the training compiler. So one thing the training compiler does is, of course, optimize the model. And it, in most cases, it will actually shrink the memory footprint of the model. So what that means is, we're training with a smaller model on the GPU, and so we have more available memory on the GPU. And so we can use a larger batch size. So that's one of the uh, added benefits of the, of the training compiler. Okay? It optimizes the model, and in most cases, it will free memory so that you can set a larger batch size and accelerate training. So the obvious question is, how would you figure out what the value is here? Well. Uh, the most scientific solution to this, uh, at least the one I use, is trial and error. Okay, so just uh, you can check um, GPU memory usage uh, in uh, in your training metrics uh, in uh, in CloudWatch, for example, and uh, and you can see you know you can estimate how much uh, how much headroom do you have there to increase the batch size, right? So here, of course, that uh, process has already been done, and and we know 24 should work. Okay, but yeah, expect to uh, um, to go through a little bit of trial and error to find the, the value that maximizes GPU memory usage. Okay, and then we define uh, another estimator, and you can see it's absolutely the same except for this, right? Training compiler config. So looking at the SDK documentation here we can see that there aren't too many options <laughs> for that configuration. Uh, you can enable it, uh, and you can enable uh, additional debugging information, right? Of course, the default is false. So I think we're fine. We just want to enable it here, and the rest is the same. And then we call fit again, and off it goes, okay? so. Now we need to wait for those two jobs to complete, okay? And um, and once those two jobs have completed, we can go and grab uh, logs or both. And there's a bit of a, a code here to do that, and uh, and extract information for that. So I'll skip that. You can go and read it, or you could just go and and look at the. Um, a look at the, the job information in the SageMaker console or in Studio. Okay, but we'll just follow in the notebook here. Okay, so we can see um, the, the vanilla or native job trained for uh, 6,276 seconds uh, at 53 samples per second. 
and the optimized model trained for uh, 3,626 seconds at about 92, 93 samples per second. So that's a, that's a pretty nice speed up, right? And we train for five epochs because we want long jobs. Um, if you have very short training jobs, um, it's likely that the uh, the overhead, so to speak, of uh, model compilation won't actually yield a faster training job. So you need to have jobs that run for a little bit. And, uh, you know, um, w some of my colleagues run some uh, detailed benchmarks and and they tell me, you know, maybe 30 minutes is the is the sweet spot. So uh, if your jobs are longer than 30 minutes, then you will actually offset the um, the compilation time. But if you have very, very short jobs, uh, you probably won't save any time uh, with compilation, quite the contrary. OK, but here it worked very well, I have to say. Uh, and yeah, so we could plot this and we can see uh, the throughput. So samples per second is 73 percent higher with the training compiler. So that's that's very nice. And um, and total training time. Yeah, it's a little hard to read, but it's uh, 40 percent faster. OK, so that's quite nice. Now, um, it doesn't mean anything if the model isn't just as accurate. Right. So um, there's an additional plot here where we compare the training loss for the, the native job and the training loss for the compiled job. OK, and it's only five epochs. But yeah, they're pretty close. Right. They're pretty close. Um, and you could say it's, you know, the. Uh, the minimal loss of accuracy here um, could be worth the the very nice speed up. Okay, and of course you could tweak and and probably get to a near identical results here. Okay, but yeah, that that example worked pretty well, I have to say. Very nice speed up, uh, fifty percent plus, and uh, and very good convergence. So not bad. Now let's take a look at the other example. So the other example is actually, let me go back to my repo here. Yeah, it's this one, multiple GPU single node, okay? And this one is about language modeling. And in fact, here we fine tune uh, GPT-2, uh, again on the SST2 dataset, and we use um, a single multi-GPU instance, okay? So it starts the same, install lots of dependencies. We don't need to go through that stuff. Uh, and then set up our bucket and our role, um, set up the training job. And again, we'll run a native job with PyTorch. Okay. Uh, and we'll run, and the batch size here is eight, right? And we'll run that on a P3 8XL instance. Uh, not sure where we set this here. Okay, so this one has four GPUs. Okay. And we'll do exactly the same for the optimized, the compiled version, except here we managed to fit uh, 22 samples in each batch, right? So again, that's a, that's a very nice speed up. And we fire, we fire up both jobs. We wait for them to complete. And this lasted for about yeah, 20, 20 minutes. They're, they're quite shorter, thanks to the, the multiple GPUs, I guess. Extract the logs. And we can see here um, the throughput is 36% higher, um, which, which is quite nice. Uh, and again, imagine running this I think this runs for uh, 100 epochs, but imagine running it for a thousand or 2,000 epochs. Um, you would, um, you know, you at the end of the day, or yeah, probably at the end of several days, uh, you you would save quite a bit of time, right? If you just went 36% faster on throughput, right? The longer the job, of course, the the larger the absolute uh, time benefit. Okay, so that's pretty good. And on convergence, I have to say this one was not as impressive. Uh, so again, maybe it's bad luck. Maybe I need to run it again. But here there is a bit of a difference uh, in uh, in loss and in, in accuracy. 
uh, between the two jobs. So not quite sure uh, why that is. Again, you know, I I'm very good at hitting any any wall on, on the way. So maybe it's just me, but go and run it and uh, and hopefully you'll get better results. And I'm sure this will improve as AWS keeps tweaking the um, the service. But for now, you know, it's uh, yeah, there's a little bit of a uh, a little bit of a discrepancy here, okay. But yeah, in any case, uh, I think it's uh, I think it's an interesting uh, it's an interesting capability. Uh, I, I really like the fact that we don't have to change anything in the code. Uh, just like you know, for SageMaker Debugger, for example, all we have to do is add this uh, parameter that doesn't have doesn't even have any. Uh, any settings, right? It's just, hey, I want to enable this. And, you know, it all works under the hood. And so if you're training large transformer models uh, of those uh, supported types here, I think it's definitely worth um, trying this and, um, and, you know, saving time and make sure, of course, you know, the models uh, converge in the same way, right? But at least on single instance training, they should. Right, we'll see about uh, the the distributed training. So there you go, um, nice nice launch, uh, and you know we at the Hugging Face are very happy to be uh, to be part of that and to uh, bring you an optimization feature for your training jobs. So I'll see you soon with more videos. Uh, there's a few more things I want to test, uh, and until then, have fun, keep learning. Bye bye.